JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 24th until January the 28th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, um, on Monday, the most important releases on the agenda are the preliminary PMIs for January from the Eurozone, uh, the UK, and the US. In, uh, in the Eurozone, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined somewhat, but to have stayed within the expansionary territory, dragging the composite PMI down to 52.6 from 53.3. Now, although this will confirm the view that the ECB may not uh, need to touch uh, interest rates this year, we don't expect uh, the euro to fall, uh, to fall notably. After all, due to the recent strong acceleration in COVID cases, uh, a small slowdown may not come as a surprise. In our view, the euro could slide decently only if we see negative surprises below the boom or bust zone of 50. This could force those halting bets over a potential hike by the ECB later this year to change their minds. Now, in the UK, the forecasts point to a fractional slide in the manufacturing index, but an increase in the service sector one, with the composite expected to have inched up to 55 from 53.6. With speculation over another rate hike by the Bank of England at its, at its upcoming gathering rising notably lately, Combined with the acceleration in the CPIs last week, improving PMIs could add more credence to the case and perhaps encourage some GBP buying. Last but not least, we have the US PMIs with both the manufacturing and services indices anticipated to have declined somewhat. However, both are expected to stay in the expansionary territory. And with the FOMC decision just today, in just two days um, uh, ahead, we doubt that investors will react to those numbers. Expectations over a March hike by the Fed and the faster rate path thereafter ha have uh, soared recently and thus market participants may be eager to get more clues on that front from Fed Chair Powell and uh, his colleagues. Now on Tuesday during uh, the Asian session, we get Australia's CPIs for the fourth quarter. The quarter-over-quarter quarter rate is, expect to, is expected to have risen to 1% from 0.8%, something that will drive the year-over-year year rate up to 3.2% from 3%. The trimmed mean and weighted uh, mean rates are also anticipated to have increased. Despite the RPA halting the view that interest rates are unlikely to be lifted this year, market participants have a different opinion. According to the, to the ASX 30-day uh, interbank cash rate futures yield curve, they expect the first hike to be delivered in May, while they see the official cash rate hitting 1% by the end of the year. Following Australia's better than expected uh, jobs data last week, accelerating inflation may allow investors to maintain their bets, which could result in another round of buying in the Aussie. However, with the broader sentiment being negative at the moment due to elevated expectations over a faster rate path by the Fed, we don't expect a long-lasting recovery in the risk-linked Aussie. Later in the day, the German IFO survey for January is due to be released, while from the US we have the CB, the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for uh, January. With regards to the German survey, the current assessment index is expected to have declined to 96.1 from 96.9, while the business expectations one is forecast to have inched up to 93 from 92.6. This is likely to leave the business climate index unchanged at 94.7. 
the US the conference board index is uh, is anticipated to have slid somewhat to 111.8 from 115.8 now Wednesday is uh, a central bank uh, is a central bank decision day first we have the Bank of Canada and a few hours later the FOMC so let's get the ball rolling with the Bank of Canada at its latest meeting, this bank kept interest rates untouched at 0.25%. And in the statement accompanying the decision, the language was, uh, was more cautious than previously, with officials expressing concerns over the economic impact of the Omicron, of the Omicron coronavirus variant. That said, the new strain proved to be milder than initially estimated, which combined with a notable improvement in the Canadian economy, and further acceleration in last week's inflation uh, data allowed uh, traders to assign a strong chance for a rate increase at this gathering. Thus, it will be interesting to see whether officials will indeed uh, hit the hike button at this gathering or not. We believe that they can indeed uh, raise uh, interest rates uh, this week. However, with such an action nearly fully priced in, we don't believe that the Looney will gain much on that. For that to happen, we believe that policymakers will need not only to hike, but also to signal that they are ready to continue with more liftoffs in the months to come. Now, passing the ball to the FOMC, no action is expected by this bank, but given the elevated speculation over a rate hike in March and the faster than previously thought rate path thereafter, we will closely monitor the statement and the press conference by Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Following hoggish remarks by several policymakers lately, we do expect a hoggish outcome. However, with uh, such elevated bets over uh, future rate hikes, we see ample room for disappointment. Anything suggesting that uh, they may not proceed as fast as the market currently anticipates could result in a rebound in equities and a pullback in the US dollar and other safe havens. Even if the outcome matches expectations, we could still experience a sell the rumor by the fact market reaction. In order for equities to fall notably lower and the dollar to accelerate north in the aftermath of the Fed decision, Powell and his colleagues may need to appear even more aggressive than the current pricing suggests, a case we see as unlikely. According to the Fed Fund futures market, participants are nearly fully pricing in four hikes by the end of the year, with the latest dot plot, uh, while the latest plot, dot, dot, excuse me, dot plot revealed that the committee sees only three. Now on Thursday, during the early Asian morning, we have New Zealand CPI for the fourth quarter. The quarter over quarter rate is forecast to have declined to 1.3% from 2.2%, but the year over year one is anticipated to have risen by nearly a whole percentage point to 5.7% from 4.9%. Remember that the RBNZ has already raised uh, rates twice in the post-pandemic era and further, acceler and further accelerating uh, acceleration in New Zealand's uh, CPI will confirm the case for more rate hikes with the next one most likely to be delivered at the upcoming gathering. Something like that could benefit the Kiwi, but whether it could hold on to those gains it could depend on the broader market sentiment and perhaps the outcome of the, of the Fed decision. Let's not forget that similarly to the Aussie, the Kiwi is a risk linked currency as well. Later in the day, we have the first estimate uh, of the US GDP for the, for the fourth quarter, which is expected to have accelerated to 5.4% um, quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate from 2.3%, confirming the view that the US economy is among the best, if not the best uh, performing economies in the aftermath of uh, the coronavirus outbreak. Conditional upon a hoggish uh, Fed on Wednesday, this could allow market participants to keep elevated their bets over four rate hikes by the end of the year. Finally, on Friday, Asian time, Japan's Tokyo CPIs for January are due to be released. And as usual, no forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is forecast to have slid to 0.3% year over year from 0.5%, underscoring the need for extra loose monetary policy by the Bank of Japan, even when other major central banks have begun to withdraw support. Later in the day, we have the US personal income and spending rates for December, alongside the core PCE index for the month. 
the Fed's favorite inflation metric. Personal income is expected to have accelerated somewhat, but spending is forecast to have declined. No forecast is available for the core PCE index uh, yet. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a great uh, rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.